Okay, did you spend some time trying to figure out which one was incorrect? Well, I'm gonna just double check things. So I'm gonna go back to my expanded notation and I'm just gonna make sure this worked. I followed all the rules, so I'm just gonna check my math. 70 times 20 is 1,400, that is correct. 70 times six was a 42 with a zero. Then I go to the top right, eight times six is 48 and eight times 20 is 160. So I know that these products are correct. Maybe I did something wrong with my addition. 0 plus 0 plus 8 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. So I dropped the 2, carried the 1. 4 plus 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 10. Dropped the 0, carried the 1. So I get 2,028. So this one seems to be right. Let's go check the other one when we did place value rows. Okay, 20 times 78. So you're supposed to do 78 times 20. Well, you can just cover the zero and then put it at the end, right? Okay, so let's put the zero there right now. And we're dealing with two times eight. Two times eight is 16. Drop the six and carry the one. Uh, I carried a five. Me, new, 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 new. Problem. That's a problem. I can't carry a five. You're not supposed to carry a five. You're supposed to carry the one because eight times two was 16, not 56. So eight times two is 16. Drop the six, carry the one. That changes everything, because now look. So drop the six, carry the one. Two times four, two times seven is 14, plus one is 15, not 19, 15. So this changes, oh, it looks so ugly in there. It'll be good for me to remember that's my mistake on there. Man alive, it's exciting. You know what? I'm gonna give you a stamp for hanging in there. So if you remember when you're all the way done with your journal today to go get a stamp, you sure can, but only one, because I caught it. I wonder if you caught it before me. Anyway, it's 1,560. If we're not in class for you to get a stamp, like if you're at home doing this, you can get a stamp the next time you come to school or the next time I see you, okay? Um, unless you are doing online school or if we're in like a closure, then you can request a stamp. Okay, so 1,560. So that changes the answer here. It drops it, just so you know, if you change a 900 to a 500, five plus four, it would be nine plus the one it would be 10. So it changes this to 2028, <laughs> which is what we're looking for, 2028 and 2028. I am so glad that we decided to check that one. That ended up working out in my favor. So thanks for hanging in there with me. Okay, let's turn the page and we're gonna do one problem solving it both ways and then we're gonna do some story problems and we'll be all the way done, okay? So let's take one problem and solve it both ways. Hang in there with me, we got this. Let's do um, 97 times 52, okay? The problem will be 97 times 52. Let's put that in a cloud. <laughs> 97 times still laughing at that mistake. Oh, everybody makes mistakes. Good thing we can laugh about it and move, move ahead. Okay, 97 times 52. So we're gonna first do it with um, place value rows. So let's write what we're doing. Okay, place value rows was the one where you draw the rectangle. I'm just gonna make mine be red. You write the first number across the top, 97. You break up the second number, 52. You also break up your rectangle into two rows. That's why it's called place value rows. 
and I do 97 times 50 and then 97 times 2. 97 times 50 means there's just going to be a zero at the bottom. Down, if you're still in the building, please come find me in the hallways. Also, Kedra, if you're still in the building, please come find me in the hallways. Thanks. Is that fun for you to hear that announcement after school? It's dark outside in case you're wondering. Okay, so you keep the zero there and now you can just do 97 times 5. Okay, so 97 times 5. 5 times 7 is 35, so you drop the 5 and carry the 3. You're going to have to really catch me on my mistakes here. 7 times 5, we did that. 35, drop the 5, carry the 3. Nine, 5 times 9 is 45, plus 3 is 48. So you get 4,850. And then you do 97 times 2, because you're taking this number times by that number. 97 times 2 is 194. So you take 4,850 and you add it to 194. And you should get, go ahead and add them all together, 5,044 should be your final answer. Whew. Well, let's do expanded notation to see if we get the same answer. Such a great way to check, right? You're supposed to be saying right. Okay, expanded notation. This is the one where we write the numbers really large. You ready? Let's write the numbers really large up here. Here we go. You break up both of them. The problem was 97 and 52. So 97 times 52. So you go like this. 97, 52. You don't have to write tens and ones this time. That's okay with me. We are going to write what we're doing though off to the side instead of down. So 90, 97, 52. So remember you go down and then diagonal. So 90 times 50. is 4,500. 90 times 2, 180. Just so you know, if you add those two together, let me get through for a minute. If you add these two together, you're going to end up getting a part of that because we are so far only halfway done. So don't think you're done. Now I go to the top right. I go straight down and then I go diagonally across. So 7 times 2, and then 7 times 50. Sometimes people like to go diagonal first with the, with the 7, so that you have 350 above the 14. That's fine with me if you want to do it that way. I don't really care. I just want you to be careful when you add and when you carry and multiply like Miss Fisher. Anyway, add the ones column, add the tens column, add the hundreds, add the thousands. Thank goodness we got the same answer as above. 5044. Will you go and outline the two boxes we made for expanded notation in green? and place value rows. Thank goodness we got the same answer. Whew, we're doing it right. So isn't expanded notation super cool? I love this one so much. You're just like, boom, boom, boom. I love this one. Um, I think it actually takes less time as you go, but it's pretty cool. It's all typically, it's all mental math when you break it up like this. Place that, and same with the place value sections, that's mental math as well. But place value rows is not so much mental math. So maybe you don't like mental math and you want to do the rows. That's fine. I don't really care. Um, what I do care about, though, is if you get out page 151. Please pause the video until you tear out page 151. Okay, you should have torn out page 151. We are going to be cutting out um, ones that are on the back side of that. So actually, we're going to be using page 152. And I want these real world problems. So 
I want the problem about Max and the problem about Monique, but we're going to cut them out separately, okay? So don't throw anything away. Just cut out these problems. I have number 26 about Monique. I don't need the blue line for the title, solve real world problems. And now I have the problem about Max. Please do not throw away the rest of your paper. Okay, you have this like crazy thing. I guess you could cut off, well cut it off so that you still have like a half a paper, but that you have numbers 13 through 24. You see that? Keep this for just a minute. The rest of that you can throw away. But I'm gonna glue in numbers 25 and number 26 to my journal and I actually am gonna glue because I have glue right here. So get those glued in, 25 and 26, and then we will solve both of them. Um, let's solve it like this. Let's move 25, no, 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 I lied. Let's move 25 over here to the left and 28 over here right by the hole. Sorry, there you go. So 25 on the top left. We're just using some story problems, making sure we know how to do multiplication with story problems. There's number 25. And number 26 is going to be really close to the bottom hole on my journal. In fact, I'm going to kind of go over the top of it like that. Okay. Well, I hope you know that it's going to be multiplication, but if you didn't, we're going to try and find the keywords, okay? Number 25, let's use our lime green. In fact, let's use our lime green and just outline the whole problem. Mine's cut a little funny. That's okay. There. Max rode his bike 44 miles every week for 28 weeks. How many miles did he ride altogether? Some of you think that altogether just means add. You want to sit and add 44 28 times? That would take forever. So even though it says all together, this is multiplication. And here are the key words of why. It's because he does this every week for a certain amount. So if you hear every and four, that's going to mean multiplication. So it's 44 times 28. Let's solve this one using expanded notation. Okay? So 44 times 28 looks like this. 44 times 28. Let's just use a pencil so we get used to doing that. You go down and then diagonal. So let's just do it in our head without writing all of it. 40 times 20, 4 times 2 is an 8 with two zeros. 40 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32 with a 0. Do you see how I'm just doing it in my head now? Okay, those would be the red arrows. Now come do the green arrows where we go to the top right and go down. 4 times 8, 32. And now go across. 4 times 20, well 4 times 2 is 8 with a 0, so 80 and add all of those partial products. Add the ones column, add the tens, add the hundreds. And it actually carried over into the thousands. So how many miles did he write all together? That's your answer, but it needs to be put into a sentence. So Max rode 1,032, what, miles all together and use some of their same words in the story problem. Max rode 1,032 miles all together. Final answer. Pretty awesome. Okay, outline the next story problem in green. And let's solve this one using, I just want to use expanded notation because I think it's so fun. Okay, you talked me into it. Let's do it. Monique wants to cover a watercolor painting with glass. The painting is 25 inches long and 35 inches wide. What is the area 
there's the key word, area. Area means length times width. So 25 inches and 35 inches. You ready? 25 and 35, split them up and write a little bit smaller. 25 and 35. 25, 35. I'm doing expanded notation again. So I'm going down 20 times 30. Two times three is a six with two zeros. Then I go across 20 times five, sorry, diagonally down, not across, diagonally down. Um, two times five is a 10 with another zero. So a 10 with another zero is 100. Now do the ones column. Five times five, 25. And this bigger one, five times 30 is 150. Add those up. Add the ones column, the tens column, and the hundreds. I got 875. Do you get 875? Okay, put it in a sentence. What is the area of the glass? Is 875, and when you do area, you have to do square inches or inches squared. I happen to say square inches, and that's okay too. So we took that 875 and we put it into a sentence. I'm going to kind of section off these story problems so that it doesn't look like it's, they're part of the same work because they're not. And then maybe I'll section it off right here too above. So I'm just kind of separating out my paper so that you can see the two different story problems happening. Okay. Oops, sorry. Now you can see it better. The area of the glass is 875 square inches. So if I wanted to ever double check these, I could use the other um, method that we use. We could use place value rows. Sorry I had to do expand notation. I just love it so much. You could do the place value rows, or you could do place value sections, or you could also resort back to doing standard algorithm, right? You could do either one of those, and it would work out. Okay, um, here is what you get to do. You have some extra time today, folks. So um, what I would like you to do before you start your assignment, um, well, actually, I want to look at the assignment really quickly with you. If you don't have your paper, make sure you grab one. It says that you can use any method, which is totally true. If you want to just do standard algorithm on all of them, that's fine with me. Um, make sure that when you're doing questions five, six, and seven, you use this information so that you know that one year is 52 weeks. Um, I actually really, really love number seven. Okay, fine. We'll do these. I'll do these problems with you because I just care about you so much. Um, anyway, but what you're going to quickly do is you don't have to, this paper where you saved the half of it. Remember this half. If you want to stamp on the next day or the next time I see you, um, you can solve the, all of these problems just on this page. So it's numbers 13 through 24. It's just multiplication, so it shouldn't be too hard. If you want to stamp, you can solve numbers 13 through 24, but I would definitely make sure your name gets on the top of it if you go to give this to me. So only do this if you finish early, okay? Don't do this right now. Only do it if you finish everything else or take it home and do it. Okay, so we're looking to look at homework numbers 5, 6, and 7. I love this so much. Um, it says the table shows how many newspapers are delivered each week by three paper carriers. Use the table to answer the questions. Use one year equals 52 weeks. So you're going to end up using that number 52 more than the year. So it says, how many papers does Jamil deliver in a year? So you have to go find Jamil. Here he is. He delivers 93 each week. So how much is that in a year? You do 93 times 52. So I'm going to do this one because, you know, I love it. 93. 52. So 45 with two zeros, 180, 6, 
and 150. If you want, you could have done any method. So six, seven, eight. Yeah. So Jamil delivers 4,000. Make sure you write this in a sentence. That's a lot of newspapers. Jamil delivers 4,836 papers in a year. Okay, now we're going to find out how much does Claire deliver. So again, in one year, Claire is 97. So you can do 97 times 52. I'm going to do standard algorithm this time. I know I'm doing this without a lot of talking. It's because sometimes it's easier if you will just solve your own math. Oh, I forgot to say papers. Now, here's what I wanted to work with on you work with this on you because number seven I just said it wrong again I wanted to work on this with you sorry number seven how could you find how many papers Mason delivers in a year without doing any multiplication Wow so Mason is the one we are searching for right now Mason we know he does 98 each week but they don't want us to do multiplication, so they don't want us to do 98 times 52. Hmm. Well, could I use the numbers that are already there to maybe use addition or subtraction? So here's what I'm thinking. Mason delivers 98 every week, and Claire delivers 97. So Mason delivers one more every week. So one more every week than Claire, right? So if I go to Claire's answer, she was 5,044. Remember, I'm trying to do this without multiplication. So if I go to Claire's answer, 5,044, is that just one more than what he did? No, because it's one more every week. Every week. So it would be 52 more than Claire because there's 52 weeks and every week she's doing one less than him. Or I should say it this way. Every week, so for 52 weeks, Mason is doing one more than Claire. So how could I find this answer? I could do what Claire delivered plus the 52 because he's delivering one more so he would have 52 more in a year so I could take the 5044 and add 52 because he's doing one more every week than what Claire does this one is Mason so how do I explain that? It says, how could you find how many papers Mason delivers in a year without doing any multiplication? So Mason does one more paper each week than Claire, comma. So that is 52 more papers delivered in all. So that is 52 more papers delivered in all. Therefore, his total is 5,044 plus 52 
which was 5,096. I love problems like this. So not only do they want to help you, I really love that thinking. Mason does one more paper. I shouldn't say does, he delivers. Mason delivers one more paper each week than Claire. So that is 52 more papers delivered in all than her, but we didn't say that. Therefore, his total is 5,444, which was Claire. Maybe we better put Claire under here plus his 52 extra. So that's how he gets his total. Pretty awesome. All right, the rest of this is um, up, for, up to you to figure out. So you have to do all on the homework side and all on the remembering side. I'm okay if you choose any method you want on questions one through nine, but if you want to do this extra paper for a stamp, you cannot work on it until your journal is done your Think Central is done, if you've got a Think Central assignment, you might want to check, and your homework and remembering is done. Once you finish all that, then you can work on this extra stamp paper. Good luck. Thanks for helping me find my mistakes and hanging in there. We'll catch you next time.